Hey YouTube, so I'm going to try something a little new tonight. Uh, I'm a biochemist. I uh, study respiration uh, and how cells breathe and uh, particularly via their mitochondria. Um, but I really enjoy fish tanks and consider them my sort of biological toy. I really enjoy watching biology in action and I just thought I'd share some of the basic chemical reactions and processes behind a fish tank and if I get some positive responses or really enjoy doing something like this, I'll post a couple of more in-depth ones, uh, kind of talking more about the biochemistry instead of just these big overarching themes. Um, but I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time on a couple of things I think are really important and often confused uh, in aquariums. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go on from there. But uh, I'm going to start over here uh, with food. Um, this is the food that we add into the tank, uh, what we feed the fish, whether we underfeed or overfeed. Now this is where you control how much goes in, and this has a lot of things to do later on with different populations of creatures and things like that, so we'll talk further more about it later. Uh, that food is turned into poop, and uh, there's also some other waste in the tank, uh, dead plants and things like that. But uh, the poop kind of uh, sinks down to the bottom of the fish tank here and turns into mulm. Uh, you can see mulm here. It's kind of the brown, powdery looking mud. It's just a mixture of fish poop and bacteria. There's uh, some worms in there that look like little earthworms that are white. I'll talk about them later. Here's mulm again in the scheme, just so you can get an idea of where we are. All right. So, that poop turns into mulm. Now, in my tank and a lot of other fish tanks, uh, people like to keep a cleanup crew. Uh, so when you overfeed or have too much food in the tank or you have some dead plants or whatnot, uh, you've got some shrimp in the tank, and those shrimp... They'll eat that leftover food, they'll eat some dead plants, they'll occasionally eat a dead fish while, uh, while you're at work before you get home to check on the tank. Uh, they're pretty great at cleaning up. They turn all sorts of waste into uh, plant food and more mulm. Uh, they just play a real great cleanup role. I have to do a lot less service to my tank. Uh, snails also fill this role. Uh, they'll also consume algae. You'll see I don't have any algae in my tank. I have two nerite snails. This is a 30-gallon tank. And I have two nerite snails, and uh, they keep it pretty much algae-free. Occasionally, I'll get a little bloom if I get out of control feeding. But So anyways, the fish poop, the shrimp poop, you wind up with mulm. Now, living down in that mulm are uh, some things called detritus worms. Now, those detritus worms, they're, uh, they're pretty great. You see a lot of confusion on the internet and occasionally on blog posts about detritus worms and what their role is in the aquarium. Are they good? Are they bad? A lot of people find them unsightly. But uh, they're often confused with a couple of other uh, worms called planaria. Uh, I'm going to caution you against the planaria and then tell you about how great the detritus worms are. Uh, because the planaria, they're really not that big of a deal. They're a carnivorous worm. They generally show up if you overfeed your tank. And their head looks sort of like that arrowhead that I've drawn there on the glass. Uh, you'll notice they have a very pointed, uh, triangular-shaped head. They have a broad, flat body. And when they move, they kind of move like a snail in that they move in a wave or an undulating pattern. Uh, when you see a detritus worm move, conversely, uh, they move much like an earthworm. It's kind of a stop-and-go, push-and-pull movement. Uh, they really look like small little ghosts of baby earthworms. Uh, they're generally, you know, an inch or less shorter. Uh, that's, you know, uh, around two, two and a half centimeters and less. Uh, and that's on the biggest side. Almost all of them are half that size or smaller. I suspect because they don't live that long, the fish love to eat them. But better than that, they take mulm, they take fish poop, leftover food, dead plants, really anything they'll eat. And they turn that into plant food. Uh, they're basically doing the job of earthworms in your garden. And everybody loves to have some earthworms in their garden. They aerate the soil and turn it over. Exact same thing here. Uh, but since it's a lot smaller system, uh, they do a lot more work. 
So detritus worms are great. They look like small little uh, glass earthworms. They'll swim in the tank and look look like a little squiggly line when they're swimming around in the tank. So they're great. I definitely recommend trying to have a couple in your tank. Uh, they generally show up just spontaneously on any plants. Sometimes in the water the fish come with. Uh, there's really no way to avoid them, and I wouldn't worry about them unless you get a massive, massive bloom. Uh, similar to the planaria, if you see more than one or two, uh, you've got an issue in the tank. You're probably overfeeding it, so back off how much food you're producing, because these detritus worms are kind of the be-all, end-all determinant of how much food you're giving the tank. So if you have a bloom of them, you have a lot of nutrient-rich food getting to the bottom of the tank. That means you're overfeeding it. So you want more mulm to be down there. It keeps their numbers down. And uh, just do a couple of gravel vacuums. If you see a couple in the water column when you do a water change, don't worry about it. They're great. The fish eat them. If uh, you don't feed the tank for a couple of days, uh, you'll start seeing these worms come out above the gravel really looking for food. And the fish will just wait there and pick them off. They're a great fish food and snack for your fish. They've been raised in your tank, so you know that they're going to be clean of anything that could make your fish sick. But those detritus worms uh, turn the poop and the mulm into organic compounds. The plants use those organic compounds in photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is kind of the big crux of a planted tank, uh, and it's why you'll see some people bubble CO2 or carbon dioxide into their fish tank, is because that accelerates this process of photosynthesis. I'm moving in a circle because it's a circle. Out comes C or oxygen, O2, and that's what fish and shrimp and everything uses to breathe in the water. Now there's some other gas processes going on because this fish tank isn't sealed. You can see up here there's some squiggles written next to it, gas exchange. That's at the surface of the water oxygen and carbon dioxide and other gases that are in the atmosphere exchange. It's a surface area problem, so the more water you have exposed to the air, the faster and better your gas exchange happens. So photosynthesis is really the crux. It's what makes plants bigger. They use all of these things to grow their petals and leaves. You'll see I have a lot of plants in here. I'm waiting for some to take off even more. So anyways, those plants make oxygen or O2. Oxygen is exchanged with the surface of the water. And that powers respiration. That's breathing. That's how fish live. That's how we live. And that's what I study. But the cool point of the fish tank is the fish and uh, respiration and all of these processes that you see going on in the background are what enable your fish to live. So kind of the big point of this is respiration plus food gives you your fish you keep in your tank. And everything else is going on behind the scenes to kind of keep that going. So there's things you can do to manipulate it and there's more detail I can go into. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed making it. And uh, here's a little tip for you right at the end. If uh, you write on glass and Sharpie like I've done here, you can actually wipe it off just like an eraser if you use some alcohol, whether it be rubbing alcohol or some vodka you have in the cabinet. It'll take it right off the glass and clean it up real nice. So don't be afraid to draw on your tank if you want to show somebody something. You can wipe it off with alcohol later. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.